Hello! We all love to have pretty colours in our watercolour palettes, but what about the ugly ones? Such as German Greenish Raw Umber. I've decided this one is the ugliest out of all of Daniel Smith's watercolours that they have, and it's a big range. This is just the one that when I painted it out the first time, I just went, Ugh! But I decided to get it because ugly colours need love too and I figured this one might actually be quite useful. So let's check it out and I'll do a painting with it. So German Greenish Raw Umber is PBR7 pigment. It's a Series 1 so it's pretty cheap. Well cheap by Daniel Smith standards. It's got a light fastness of 1 which is excellent. It's semi-transparent, non-staining and granulating. I'm going to just blob a bit on here and you can see it's all come out so that's going on here really quickly. It's such a gruesome colour. I liken it to the scum that you get at the bottom of duck ponds or maybe even duck poo brown perhaps something like that but let's swatch it out and see how it's going to look. I have so much paint on here. <laughs> Never mind. So what I've noticed with this colour is it's quite a low tinting strength. It's not very dark. You can see there's the mass tone of it, which kind of looks a bit darker on camera than it really is in person. But once you paint it out, it does go quite a soft, browny, greeny colour. I don't think it's a very pretty colour. I find it to be very drab and kind of depressing. It does have that greenish tint to it, as you can see, but it's just, yeah, that's <laughs> not very pretty, is it? I do quite like that even though it says semi-transparent, it seems to be a lot more transparent than that, and it's nice and light. I could imagine it would be quite a good colour for mixing, and it is also a pretty good earth tone as well. So PBR7 is one of those colours that's very versatile and is present in a lot of different paints. For example, in raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber and burnt umber and all those sorts of browns like that. So it's a very common pigment, it's a natural one and is going to be very light fast. So this is probably not going to fade in the light for a very long time. So it's pretty good for that. Alright, let's get into a painting because I thought of something immediately when I saw this colour and I just figured I needed to paint it out. Well, it certainly doesn't look very appetizing in the mixing palette, but other than duck leavings, this color also made me think of cane toads. Now, I don't know if you know much about cane toads, but they are native to South and Central America, but they were introduced into Australia quite a long time ago to control destructive beetles in Queensland's sugarcane crops. But unfortunately, they were too effective and their numbers absolutely exploded. They are capable of poisoning other predators that try to eat them, including snakes. So they don't really have any natural enemies in Australia and they are just spreading right across the northern part of Australia, all the way from east to west. And despite many efforts by the Australian government, they have yet to get under control. They've trying to eradicate them, but it's almost an impossible task now because they have just spread so far and wide. So this is why it's usually a really bad idea to introduce foreign species into a different ecosystem because quite often they'll thrive a little too much and destroy everything else that is native in the area. But aside from all of that, this German greenish raw umber paint was pretty much perfect for this not so attractive toad, which incidentally is also the world's largest true toad. As I mentioned earlier, this German greenish raw umber is a low to mid level tinting colour and so I did actually end up using a little bit of neutral tint which is much darker to paint in its eye and some of the shadows around it.
and here we have it, a beautiful cane toad. I had fun using this colour, it isn't exactly the most stunningly beautiful one. Here it is here, it's a very muddy looking poo kind of colour, but it does granulate quite nicely and it looks better when it's painted out so it's got a more translucent effect to it. And it mixes well with the neutral tint, that's for sure. I haven't actually tried it with other colours to see, but I imagine it would be quite useful to neutralise some of the really bright colours, you know, if you just want something a little bit more muted. So I think it's got its uses in the palette. It's not particularly attractive on its own, but at least you can paint a cane toad with it. So thanks very much for watching this video. It was just a bit of fun and silliness. I was just curious to know what this paint would actually look like when I used it in some type of art artwork and if you liked this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and I will see you all again really soon for my next video. Swatch you later! Bye!